Subgroups. groups. Uh, simply, a subgroup is a group that lives inside a bigger group. This is the intuitive definition of it. So, here, assume we have a group G, and we have subset H that lives inside G. We will call H subgroup if H itself is a group under the operation of G. Okay, so H is a group contained in the bigger group G. So we will say H is a subgroup of G. And we mean here uh, the operation of each of the groups is the same one, the same operation. Now every uh, group has two subgroups. G itself is considered as subgroup. And this, is, this has a name improper improper or uh, the improper subgroup of G. I will keep writing subgroup this way. This is called the improper, the whole group at, uh, uh, at once. And uh, if we take the identity because G is a group then the identity lives there. This identity by itself it makes a group just set with one element and it is a trivial subgroup so it's called uh, the trivial I would say the trivial subgroup of G any other group will be called proper subgroup so we mean by a proper subgroup not the G itself and not the uh, trivial not uh, subgroup which is not the identity and you uh, already know if I ask you uh, about uh, subgroups you have seen, and I believe uh, you have seen some of them already. Now, if we take uh, G to be the group of the reals, non-zero real numbers, and the multiplication, the usual multiplication, you know this is a group. And R double star, we mean the non, uh, the positive, so this is another group. This is the positive real numbers. So uh, positive. The zero is not there. Positive real numbers. This one positive real numbers. But this one, you know it, is the non-zero real numbers. So the positive real numbers is a subset of the non-zero real numbers. And by its own, it is a group right Associative, associativity happened there if you multiply uh, two positive integer you get positive uh, real numbers and it's, so it is a closed the identity is one is there uh, and if you get if you have a real number then the multiplicative inverse is one over that real number the positive so one over the, the that positive number is still positive so okay so this is subgroup of r star okay now here we want to get used to say uh, some set is a group and then automatically we understand what the operation is meant to be. When we say Z as a group, Z as a group, let me say at the beginning, then indeed we mean addition, not multiplication, because Z is not a group under multiplication. So when we say Z is a group, that implicitly means the addition. So Z with addition is a subgroup of Q with addition. And also Q. If I say Q is a group, I mean with addition. If I say uh, R is a group, also I mean addition. Because under multiplication, the real number is not a group. The rational number is not a group. Because the zero has no multiplicative inverse. Okay? So when I say these things our groups then I mean we are using the addition the regular normal addition so Z is a subgroup of Q and Q is a subgroup of R okay we have seen this so this is example number uh, sorry oops one and uh, what okay this is example number two this is three L is 1, negative 1, I, negative I, where I square is negative 1. 
we have seen this is a group before and these numbers are, are from the complex numbers so it is a subgroup of the complex numbers and here we mean addition because we have non-zero complex numbers okay number four now we have u8 the group of units inside z8 are the integers that are relatively prime with eight one three five seven okay now if you pick these two elements here and make a subset of them then you will find that subset is a subgroup because it is a group by itself now we are working here under multiplication when we say units then we are working up under multiplication so one times one is one one times three is three and three times three is one because you are working modulo eight so this is a group this is closed the identity is one what is the inverse of three it is three itself because three times three is one okay now if we go to z6 cross z4 which consists of ordered pairs a first component is coming from z6 second component is coming from z4 then when we add two ordered pairs we add the first component together but we take them modulo 6 and then we add the second components together and but we take them modulo 4 okay now we claim this uh, subset h is a subgroup of z6 cross z4 we claim that how do we know that well, what let's check them let's check that if we take any two ordered pairs from h add them then the result is is there let's try one let's say we want to add 3 0 plus 3 2 now when we add first component we said we take it modulo 6 so it is 0 and second component 0 plus 2 modulo 4 is 2 so this and this have been taken modulo 6 this and this has been taken modulo 4 so we got 0 2 it is here okay now if you add these two things together two ordered pairs together you will get 3 and 0 it is this one if you add this to itself you get 0 0 so the inverse of this element here is itself and what if we add this to itself we get 0 0 so the inverse of this ordered pair is itself and same thing for that so the inverse of each one of them exists inside this set and the uh, addition is closed uh, and uh, the, uh, the identity of addition is 0 0 is there and addition of uh, in this case is associative how do I know because we know that this is a group and if we take three elements of it then the associativity happen now if you go to H and take three elements these three elements are essentially coming from the group so associativity will happen to them and we will repeat this fact in a little while okay example number six if we take D4 you remember D4 the dihedral group uh, of the uh, of the of, uh, of the of degree four, yeah, of order four, uh, it is the symmetries of the square, which consists of rotations and reflections. Now, if we take the rotations only together as subset, then that subset is a group, and therefore it is a subgroup of D four. And here I recalled uh, these things are zero, are zero and R1, R2, these are rotation. Remember R0 is doing nothing, this is the identity. R1 rotating 90 degrees, R2 rotating 180 degrees, R3 rotating 270 degrees, okay? Now, for sure R2 is its own inverse because if I rotate 100 degrees and then another 100 degrees, then I go back to the point I, I was on. Now, uh, to make sure this is a group by itself, now you consider this uh, multiplication table now if you multiply any two of them the result will be uh, an, uh, an element in H because they are rotations like if you multiply two rotations if you do ro two rotations after each other the result will be uh, 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 one of the rotations you already have 
Uh, okay, what's the inverse of R1? So what's the inverse of R1 here? Look, R0 is here. So the inverse of R1 is R3, and the inverse of R3 is R1. Uh, the inverse of R2, this is R2, this is R2. Uh, multiply them, you get R0, and so on. So the inverse of each one of them exists. The identity is there. The multiplication is closed, and associativity happens. Why? Because any three elements in H are essentially elements in D4 and associativity happened to them there because D4 is a group so the associativity of these three elements in H happens there again and we will say that in general in a little while so these are six examples of uh, subgroups now let us learn some results and facts about uh, these subgroups okay so when you're proving that a subset is a group of a group is a subgroup sorry when you're proving that some subset is a, a subgroup it is never necessarily to check the associativity this is what i have already talked about when i talked about uh, examples that contains uh, l and h now what this thing says if i have h a subset of a subgroup g now take this h Take any three elements inside it and see if the associativity happen or no. Now we are taking three elements from H, but these three elements are essentially from G. So they satisfy the associativity. So we don't have to satisfy it again inside H. So whenever you are given a, sub a subset of a group and I ask you to prove it is a subgroup, then you don't have to worry about associativity. So you have three things to worry about. It is the close and the multiplication. The identity exists there. And every, every element has an inverse. And the fourth axiom is of groups. You don't have to worry about, which is associativity. And this is uh, stated in the following theorem. This theorem says, if you have a non-empty, we must have a subset to be non-empty. We cannot say an empty subgroup there is nothing there is no definition like that so if i want to ask you to sub prove that some subset is a subgroup you must go first and prove it is not empty okay so a subset h is a subgroup of g if two things happen it is closed under multiplication any two element I multiply them you stay in h and every element has an inverse oh where did the identity go we said we don't need associativity, so we need closed under, under operation, identity, and every element has inverse, three things. So where's the identity there? Actually, the identity is included inside these two conditions. So good. Now, instead of proving the four axioms, associativity, no need. Now this theorem is saying now identity, to check the identity is no need because the identity will be there for sure if the two conditions here in this theorem are satisfied. So these two conditions will guarantee for you the identity is there. And we will prove that. So to prove that a given subset is a subgroup, then just you need to prove these two things. Close the multiplication and every inverse has an identity inside that subset so uh, to prove this theorem this says we need only to prove the identity is there right because we said associativity is not needed anymore we need three things now part i and part two are two things are given already so when the thing that the, the, the only thing that is left is the identity so if we prove that these two parts guarantee the identity is there then we are done but how to guarantee the identity is there giving i and uh, 1 and 2 here. So uh, let a uh, belongs to h. Can I say that? Which is not, not empty. Okay. Now, can I choose a to be not the identity? Can I say here at the beginning, if h consists of the identity, this is a trivial then done why i'm saying that 
if this subgroup consists only of the identity then it is a subgroup then we have nothing to do okay so we will assume suppose so uh, suppose uh, the identity uh, there exists let me say there exists an element which is not the identity and it belongs to H so H is more than just the identity element so I should uh, write uh, these two lines uh, at the beginning of the proof so I will continue writing the proof here so I will say okay we don't need that now we have an A so uh, in that H we will say now So okay, uh, we were saying that to prove that a subset is a subgroup, we, in, we only need to do these two conditions, which guarantee the identity is there. So we assumed we have an element which is not an identity, an element in that subset. Uh, then part two says, then by two, uh, a inverse belongs to H. So we are using these two conditions to obtain the identity and now this condition says if you have a and h then you have a inverse in there so we will use it now we have a and an inverse what happens if we multiply these two elements if you multiply them we must end to be in h why because part one says if you have two elements in h from h and you multiply them the result will stay in h a and an inverse are in h multiply them we stay there so and this is the identity and we are done so these two conditions again these two conditions will guarantee that the identity is in H okay and there's no need to the associativity then these two conditions are enough to prove that a subset is subgroup and we will see in a little while that if that subset is finite then one condition out of these two is enough which is closed we will see okay so let's see an example in this example we have a subgroup we have a subset which we want to prove what is a subgroup this is H consists of all two by two matrices of this form where B is uh, in R so it is 1 B 0 1 so all this matri all matrices that uh, all elements are fixed except the element in here it can be any real number okay so this is a set this is a big set like uh, if I let me, let me write it I wish I had write it this way uh, uh, 1 B 0 1 where B is any element from the real number so we have infinitely many matrices uh, in this uh, subset H now we want to prove it is a subgroup so we will uh, satisfy the two conditions this is for the first condition take two subgroups from there this is a this is C multiply them then the resulted matrix of multiplication takes that form also it is one in here zero in here one in here and some real number in here so this is in H this is one of the matrices in H good so it is a closed under multiplication so I will say like uh, if you find this is a question in some quiz you will say H is closed under uh, matrix multiplication multiplication um, okay and uh, part two if I have an inverse in H which we call this one the uh, an element sorry a matrix in H then its multiplicative inverse is in here so if we multiply these two matrices we will get the identity if we want to make sure this is 1 and B 0 and 1 multiplied by 1 negative B uh, 0 and 1 uh, the result will be uh, one zero zero one which is the identity so uh, the inverse of this matrix is that one and it belongs to be this is one one here zero in here and some real number here so it is in H 
So good. So we have the two conditions satisfied. Therefore, we will say H is a subgroup. So if you see th such a, a question in the exam, you need to write the solution uh, very detailed. Okay. Now, uh, we said we, t we need just to check two conditions. Closed under multiplication and the inverse exists for every element. And then we get a subgroup. If the subset is finite, then we need only to check one condition. And this says here, uh, if H is a non-empty finite subset of G. Okay? Now, if H is a closed under multiplication, just a closed, oops, just a closed under multiplication, closed under multiplication, then I get H is subgroup. As long as it is finite and closed, just one condition, the closedness, that gives you H is a subgroup. But to make sure that we are doing fine, uh, let's prove it. So uh, we want to prove that uh, uh, the two conditions. We want to prove H is a subgroup, okay? We want to prove that this condition here, closed under multiplication, uh, will give me the other missing condition, which is for every element there is an inverse, okay? So the other condition, part I, part two, condition two in the previous theorem is current guaranteed. If we have this condition here, which is the closeness, okay? Now, choose A belongs to H. Then the closure implies that A to power K is an H for every K, right? We chose an element. In H, which is not the identity, okay? Now, if you multiply this element, the result will stay in H. Multiply it again with A, the result will stay in H, and so on, because we are assuming, the hypothesis says, that H is closed under multiplication. So, wherever you multiply H by itself, the result will stay in H. Okay. Now, since H is finite, the powers cannot be all distinct. Cannot. I mean these powers, a to power k, they cannot be all distinct. Why? If all powers of k are distinct, then we have infinitely many powers of a, right? For k equals 1, or 2, or 3, or 4, or 5, or 6, and so on, to infinity. So if they are all distinct, a to power 1, a to power 2, a to power 3, a to power 4, and so on, if they are all distinct, and they are all in H, that means H is infinite. So we cannot allow that to happen because H is assumed to be finite. So this means that, this means that there are integers I and G such that a i a to power i equals a to power g. We cannot allow the, all these powers to be distinct. So two of them at least must be the same. But that means we may assume here one of them is greater than the other. So we will assume that i is greater than g, not equal, greater than. So that means a to power i minus g is the identity, correct? Multiplied by a to power g inverse. Uh, okay, I mean, uh, uh, yes, is the identity because a to power g inverse, a to power g is in the group, so it has an inverse, so multiply it by a. So uh, that means uh, this gives a times a to power i minus j minus 1 equals the identity, correct? So we multiplied a, we multiplied a by some integer. What was that integer? We multiplied a by this integer here. And we got, inver we got identity. So... 
a inverse is that integer a i minus j minus 1 correct but we know that a to power trace to any power is inside h and this is inside h then we are done a inverse is inside h okay okay one of you may say that well wait a minute what if this thing is zero oh okay so what if this thing is zero let me write it here if i minus j minus 1 equals 0 that means i uh, equals let me say i equals uh, j minus 1 uh, let me say that so this will give me the following a to power i equals a to power uh, so I want to write here okay no, I made a mistake uh, i minus 1 equals g so this means a to power i equals a to power i minus 1 correct now we are in a group do cancellation law so we get a equals the identity like cancel this copies this number of copies so a equals the identity but we assumed here that the element we chose was different from the identity so we cannot have this to be zero we cannot this is for sure does not equal zero and so it is fine we have no problem then the inverse is in h and then we are done okay now what we have achieved here again we assume the group to be finite the subset h to be finite and we guarantee that it is a group only if we obtain it to be closed under multiplication because this closeness guaranteed the inverse condition for us all right so let's see an example where we will prove that some subset is a group and we only need to prove it is uh, closed under the operation let's go now let h consist of all permutations in s5 that fixes one you know s5 it has 120 elements right permutations uh, it cons this s5 consists of elements one two three four and five okay now uh, any permutation of s5 sends any of these elements to another element or to itself now I am saying here take all the permutations in s5 take the permutation that fixes one that sends one to one give them all together and call them a set h now we are claiming here that this set h is a subgroup and we want to prove this okay now notice that h is finite why because s5 is finite h is a subset of a finite set so h is finite now this is another description of, of h it is f that belongs to the permutation i'm saying here a fuse of notation uh, s5 means the set and the permutations so i'm using so when you see this f belongs to s it does not mean it is one of these numbers this is just the set s5 means the permutation is not the element okay and again i uh, uh, abuse notation by saying that okay so it's any uh, element in s5 any function in s5 which is functions permutation are function that keeps uh, one goes to one okay now we want to prove now h is h is finite so to prove it is a subgroup we only need to prove it is closed under the operation and the operation here is composition of uh, functions or of permutations so now take two elements from h g and small h we want to prove that their composition is in, in h and so h is closed and therefore by the subgroup by the the theorem just we have proved h is a subgroup okay and to do so 
since the small since G and small h are in capital H, then G of 1 is 1 and H of 1 is 1. Take the composition, boom, boom, the composition is 1. So this composition here, this function, takes 1 to 1. Good, so it is in here. Then we are done. So we only needed to prove one condition to guarantee that, to show one condition to prove that uh, the subset is a subgroup, one condition, because the subset is finite. Okay, we are done with the definition of subgroups, and uh, we learned uh, two theorems that help us to prove that some subset is a subgroup, two theorems. Okay, now we will define uh, the center of a group, which is a subgroup inside the group itself. What is the center of a subgroup? Assume we have a group G. The center is, now here it is, it is denoted this way. We will take all elements inside G such that that element commutes with every other element in G. See, an element is in Z of G if and only if, if and only if, that element commutes with every element in G. Okay? Let me uh, say it. This is a group G, okay? Now we take an element out of G and ask that element, do you compute with ev commute with every element inside G? If yes, we take it as an element of the center. We go again, take an element. We we'll see if it commutes with every other element. If there is only one element in the group which does not compute with this guy, then we send it back to the group and we will not take it to the center. Okay? Now, it is immediate that if G is abelian, then all elements commute with each other. So any element in the group commutes with any other element in there. So the center will be the group itself. If it is abelian, then the center of G is G. If it is not abelian, then the center is not the whole G. Yes. Because it's not abelian because there are some elements that does not compute with uh, some other elements. So there are some elements which are not in the center. So the center is not the whole group. Okay. Now, to have fun with this definition, we will find uh, the center of D4. We will not try to find the center of an abelian group, the ones we know, because it, it's... It's, it's nothing, it's trivial, the center, the whole group. So we will choose a group which is not abelian. And when we think about groups that are not abelian, we think about the symmetric groups, and then we think about uh, the dihedral groups, or the, gr the general linear groups. These are the ones that are not abelian that we know so far. Okay, let's have fun. The identity for sure, we will, uh, it will be, uh, it will commute with any other element, right? The identity, yes, we'll leave it. Let's see if we can take one. Let's see. One with R0 is R1, with, with, with R2, uh, sorry, with one with R1, uh, compose R1 is R2. One compose R2 is R3. One compose R3 is R0. So, okay. Uh, let me see. Uh, okay, everything is fine so far. One compose uh, R2 is R3, and R2 compose R1 is R3. Right? Right. Yes. Now you see this I3 here? This is, we are taking R1 compose R2. In here, we are taking R2 compose R1. Okay. Now what's happened if I take the composition of R of this? Okay. This V is the composition of D and of R1. So this is... Uh, D compose R1. What about R1 compose D? This is R1 here. Okay, let me use the same curve. This is R1 here. And this is D. If we say R1 compose D, then we get H. Oh, okay. So, R1 D is not the same uh, as D R1. They are not the same. Correct? Yes. So 
R1 does not commute with D and D does not commute with R1 so R1 and D are not in the center let's uh, complete the fun let's go to R2 R3 let me go to R3 and let me pick some element R3 with D and uh, uh, D with R3 okay here we go let me choose another color yes this is uh, D with R3, R3 with D. Okay, so this is D compose R3 is H. D compose R3 is H. Let's see R3 compose D. Where is D? Here we go. Okay, R3 compose D is uh, uh, is not equal to D compose R3. So R3 is not in the center because it's not commuting with, with D. What about uh, H? another color let's take H let me hunt for another element that does not commute to the H H and R1 uh, R1 and H good H and R1 gives D H compose R1 gives D now R1 compose H gives T so H is not in the center R1 H is not equal to H R1 so H is not in the center. So what's left? T. T with whom? Let me take uh, T with V. T with V is R3 and V with T. Okay. T. Another color. T with V is R3. Okay. What's about V and T gives R1? Okay. So VT is not as the same as TV. So T and V does not commute with each other. So none of them is in the center. Okay. So what's left? Nothing. Now, if you go to R2, you will find R2 commute with any other element. So we are here uh, as, uh, claiming that the center of D4 consists of the identity which is r0 and r2 so i will leave it for you to make sure that r2 commutes with any other element okay so this is having fun with the center okay now we learned what the center is and we want to prove it is a subgroup so given a group g take the elements that commute with everything which is the center then the center will come out to be a subgroup by itself it is a group by itself and it is contained in G so it is a subgroup of G now what we need to do to prove it is a subgroup two conditions it is not it might not be finite okay so we will not go for the one condition thing because we cannot guarantee it is finite in the case of D4 it is finite but the center of any group might not be finite we don't know so we, ne we need to prove the two conditions it is a closed under multiplication and every element in there has an inverse okay so how do we prove it is a closed under multiplication so the, the theorem says the center is a subgroup of G okay now if I choose two elements A and B in the center that means A commutes with any G and B commutes with any other G with any G in the group and we want to conclude that their multiplication is in the center which means their multiplication commutes with every element of the group so choose an arbitrary element in the group here here it is so a B times G we want it to be here G times a B so we will move from here to here to conclude that and we can do it using associativity because we live in a group a b and g are all in the group capital g so use associativity keep moving and then you will end up here so this is easy now uh, we prove the first condition which is closed under addition now what's about the second condition for every inverse for every element the inverse is, is in there so if we choose an element uh, in the center it commutes with any other element we want to show that its inverse commutes with any other element okay now uh, a is in z then this happens now what we do here just a trick 
Since A is in the center, it commutes with G for any G in the group. So multiply from this side and from this side by A inverse. A inverse here, A inverse here. And to keep the equality, equality happening, we need to do the same thing in the other side of the equality. So we get all this. Now use associ associativity. This and this will go for identity. And then we will be left with that. So this side will come here. This, this thing will go to the identity and then we will, will be left with that. So G A inverse is the same as A inverse G. And small g is any element in the group. So A inverse commutes with any element in the group. So A inverse is in the center. So good. Now these two uh, things closed under multiplication uh, and uh, the inverse exists. Uh, that means uh, this thing and this thing. Let me write it here. That means Z of G is, oops, this is G. is a subgroup subgroup of G okay good so the center of the any group is a subgroup of itself okay move good 